Hello. Welcome back. This is Henry and I'm here to give you some tips regarding how to improve your speaking in English. Okay. Uh, the last time in my previous video, I gave some suggestion that most students should be focusing on words and and structure if if they want to improve their English in terms of speaking. Right. So I want to elaborate a little bit more about these two facts. Okay. So when I say to focus on words primarily, it doesn't mean that you have to you have to learn and study by heart of as many words as you can, like uh, like studying five to ten words every day from dictionary. It's not like that. Because it doesn't work. I have done it and many students have done it. We have learned many words, maybe five to ten words every day. And we were expecting that one day we will be knowing like three thousand words of the of a typical English dictionary. So <laughs> it doesn't really work out that well that way. It doesn't. It will never work because we memorize the words, just the meaning of the words, and trying to remember the word itself. It's. It doesn't stay long enough in our heads. That's the problem. So, if you want to learn new words effectively, you always should learn together with phrases. I mean, words and phrases together. If you learn it that way, you will remember whatever the meaning of the word is intended to be used in some sentences, right? So, let's say he was a bad dog. Instead of um, instead of trying by heart, just in this case, showing that you are at the very beginning level of speaking English, okay? He was a bad dog. Then you didn't know the word, the meaning of the word bad. So you look for it in the dictionary, and you you look for it, and then you saw it. Bad. Okay, that's something not good. Whatever the diction is saying, you will write it down in your notebook and you will try to memorize it. That's how we normally did it when we were a lot younger. Because that's what we were told by teachers. But if we learn, if we try to rem remember the whole phrase, it's a bad dog. It's a bad dog. It's a bad dog. What does it mean? It means that not only we remember what the feeling of bad gives us. In this case, it's a bad feeling, negative feeling, negative meaning, bad, bad dog, right? So if we remember it that way, we will never forget it because we know where it is used. So it's a bad dog. It's a bad dog. Instead of writing down bad, bad, beady, bad, beady, bad for like full pages, you rather write it's a bad dog, it's a bad dog. That means you also learn grammar at the same time because you see love to be is article A, adjective bad, bad, beauty dog, now. You're also learning phrases and words together that also help you with grammar. So. So what I'm suggesting today is to learn phrases and words together instead of studying words by heart. That's the number one point. And then another thing, um, I want to emphasize that we should not focus too much on grammar when we're trying to speak English. Yeah, I was. I told in the, my previous video that we should focus on structure at the second second phase and I there I mentioned that it can also be mentioned as grammar but I would rather stick it to us like 
um, structure. Because the word grammar and structure sounds similar, but it's different actually. Okay, I'm going to show you an example here. Here is a sentence. I went to a shop and bought some cheap clothes, right? So we we learned in, at school when we were young that uh, there were some structure of grammar, some grammar rules that we have to follow. Like uh, some teachers, I remember when I was young, we were taught. Uh, they they told they told us that every sentence, if not all, most sentences have this uh, this form: subject, verb, and object. So. This is something we all remember. Most of us remember subject, well, and object. So, John beats the dog. John plays with fire. Something like that. Subject, verb, object. It's very simple, and but there are a lot more complicated forms and rules when we deal with. Uh, a lot of uh, adjectives and conjunctions and adverbs and all that and we try to put into one sentence, join two or three sentences. This form is not enough, but still this will remain as a general form, right? And in here I would like to um, I would like to emphasize that there is another way of seeing things, seeing sentences, we can either see as the group of nouns and the group of verbs. Nouns and verbs. Yes, that is. Nouns and verbs. Very simple. Only noun and verbs. So look at look at this sentence. I went to a shop. This is actually one complete sentence. And this one is a phrase, bought some cheap clothes. And I joined it the two sentences, one sentence and a, a phrase with and the congestion. Right. So when we try to learn this structure, if we consider that this is a pronoun, this is verb, and then there's a proposition, article, noun. Conjunction, verb, adjective, adjective, and noun. It's a lot to remember if we try to uh, remember in grammar. And it is okay when you write it down, but it is not okay when you try to speak. In conversation, the other person cannot wait too long to hear your response, to hear your sentence. So speaking is all about building up sentences in your head and speak it up. So if you think too much about grammar, you're going to have some problem while speaking. You won't be able to speak smoothly and it will take some time. So how do we make it easier? Okay, here I'm suggesting one thing. Like I said, there are only the group of noun and the group of verb. So, let's see here. To a shop. What does it mean to you? To a shop. What is the main thing over here? The key word here in this part of the sentence is shop. It's a noun. Okay? And here is the word. Went. That is a verb. But I'm going to say, I'm going to join this went with I. So it becomes I went. I went is something complete and meaningless. I went to someone. No, to a shop. This is the key word, the shop. And bought. 
It's just fuck. And here, some cheap clothes. Some cheap clothes. Take it as the whole, the whole thing together as the group of now, isn't it? This is these two adjectives are just emphasized on the word clothes, which is a noun, right? So you see, fuck now. Fuck and now. There's only fuck and now. I'm talking in terms of groups, in terms of structure, right? So if you want to change it uh, with something uh, something else, another different sentences, let's say I mean right here. Don't learn too much grammar. I'm going to write that sentence. Don't learn too much grammar. Okay, let's find out. Put it in your head. Don't learn too much grammar. Don't learn. What's the key words in the whole sentence? Learn is the key word. That's the verb. So you want to say that, say to someone that don't learn too much grammar. How do you want, how do you say that? The first thing you have to focus in your mind is what's the key words that I want to tell that person? Okay, learn. But you want the positive meaning or negative meaning of learn. You try and say that not to learn. So we're going to make a negative. So don't learn because you already know don't at this level. So it's easy. Don't learn. That's the first thing. You will come up from your mouth. Don't learn. So you have put the rough part, the rough group. Don't learn. And then what you want to say is you don't want that person to learn too much of grammar, right? So the second thing is, second keyword is grammar, right? grammar but you want to make it in a way that the person doesn't w want to learn a lot of grammar so too much grammar that's what you already know that's why this will become this noun group will become right or right after the verb group don't learn too much Grammar, yes. So if you want to generalize this sentence, don't learn the group of what? Too much grammar. That's a group of noun. Okay, this is a group of what? This is a group of noun. So my tips today for you is that whenever you want to speak something, just think two keywords. It might the two keywords. One is the verb, one is the noun. And based on what you want to say, decide positive or negative of whatever you want to say. Then combine the noun group and the verb group. It's easy. That's what I want you to share today, and I hope this video was useful for you, and thank you for watching. Until next time, bye.